Mayor, more than half of Georgians that can get the shot haven't. Who aren't you reaching? Why aren't they? And what's your strategy? Well, it's very disappointing, Stephanie. There's hesitancy, obviously, across the state right now. And uh, you have to remember, this is, is, is still in so many places in this state, a very red state. So we know that there's hesitancy on the far right, but also uh, many minority communities are still very concerned about the vaccine. And we know the historical context of, of those concerns, of longstanding just mistrust, distrust of, the, of vaccines. And so we are continuing to educate people uh, I've been fully vaccinated as well as my husband, my mother, and two of my teenagers are fully vaccinated. And so it's going to be important for trusted voices in our community, whether it be elected officials or ministers or teachers. Um, and in this case, the vice president of the United States speaking directly to our communities, letting people know that it is safe and in their best interest to receive this vaccine. And as things, I, I mentioned it in our intro, are opening up, we are seeing this disturbing spike in crime. It's happening across the country, but it is definitely happening in your city. Homicides at the highest level in 20 years. And we're going into a summer hot weekend. It could be very bad. What are you doing about it? We are doing every single thing that we can do about it. Um, just yesterday, I had a briefing uh, from the special assistant in charge with the FBI we are looking for outside support on, and resources, working with all of our partners. But you're absolutely right. Unfortunately, this is a spike that we're not just seeing in Atlanta. We are seeing it across the country. I'm talking to mayors in major cities, in cities really big and small. And we are all grappling with the same issues. In Atlanta specifically, we have really put a push towards getting our young people to work. This summer, our schools were closed by and large for the entire school year. And there is the mental health piece as well. So uh, President Joe Biden and the American Rescue Plan set aside $5 billion towards violence prevention programs. But also there is the here and now that we have to deal with. And we believe that getting at least 1,000 young people to work this summer, which we've had great success with, will help, but there is still so much work to be done. And until we deal with the systemic issues of gun violence in this country, how easily young people, people with mental illnesses can access guns in this country, I'm afraid that this will not be the last summer that we are having this conversation. You've called this a COVID crime wave, but killings are up 50% from before COVID. Where is this coming from? Well, I think there are a couple of things that you have to compare. Remember, in Georgia, we were open up before the rest of the country, even before the CDC said that it was safe for us to open. Uh, so our nightclubs and our bars remain open. We had people traveling here from across the country to party in our city. Uh, so we believe our comparable numbers are from 2019, which they are still up. Um, but again, this is an issue that's happening in cities across the country. If it were an Atlanta issue alone, uh, then I would know that there was something that we weren't getting right addressing this issue. But when I'm talking to mayors uh, and hearing from mayors in cities across the country in large urban areas, we're all experiencing this, which means that we all have to work together to find a solution to this gun violence that is gripping our nation. COVID left a lot of people battered and bruised, not just physically, but also emotionally. And what we are seeing, which is a very disturbing trend, our domestic violence cases are up significantly. A number of the shootings that we are seeing are between people who are acquaintances, an inability or an unwillingness to simply resolve conflict with words. And again, we are going to do everything in our power to get to the other side of what I describe as this COVID crime wave, but it really will take us all working together, also with a federal and national support on this effort. Let's we have some of the most gun laws uh, in the nation 
right here in Georgia. Well, let's talk about law enforcement because we sort of talked about prevention, but let's talk about current response. Atlanta's police chief announced a restructuring of the department. Are you seeing officers hesitant to show up to scenes and respond because of the heightened tensions over the last year? Absolutely not. Our, our officers are still showing up to do the job that they were sworn to do. But law enforcement across the nation um, has really had a difficult time retaining and retracting people into law enforcement. What we are seeing right now in Atlanta, people who are eligible for retirement in previous years perhaps would have considered staying on the force a bit longer. People are leaving the force. And again, this is not just happening in Atlanta. It's happening across the country. Um, so our officers are still showing up, doing a, a, the job that they were sworn to do, trying to protect our communities. But you have to remember, Stephanie, law enforcement shows up after a crime has been committed. We just had a shooting recently. The uh, suspects were apprehended within 10 minutes. So we are making the arrest. But what we have to do as leaders and, and what we have to do communities across America, we've got to stop these shootings from happening on the front end. And it's going to take work from all of us. Mm -hmm. We have to protect our communities and we have to find a way to get these good men and women who are part of law enforcement to want to be in that line of work and want to stay in it. Uh, you are uh, you know, I was going to ask you about this. You're one of several Democratic mayors not running for re-election. From a personal perspective, I, I can obviously see why, especially given what you've been through in the last year. What made you decide this and what's next? Stephanie, I can't say that it was one thing in particular, um, but just as thousands and maybe even millions of people across the country have really reflected on this last year and, and how they want to spend the rest of their lives, my heart for serving my community remains. It will never go away. But for this season, I don't think that I have to do it as mayor of Atlanta. And the reality is this, there's always a date certain, at least in Atlanta, with the time that you have to serve. And voters get to decide every four years, and so do elected officials. The last year was not what I had anticipated or, or would have scripted for my time as mayor, but I am very proud of the work that we've done in Atlanta and I can hold my head up high. And as I contemplate the next season of my life, I know that I'll pass the baton on uh, to someone else who can continue the work that we've done on behalf of our communities. Even outside of COVID, issues regarding affordable housing, um, making sure that people have access to transit, making sure that our kids can get a solid public education. Those are issues that will remain whether I'm mayor or not. And I trust that the next person will be able to keep pushing our city forward.